Well, welcome to Coffee and Tools. We are working on the beetle bug again today. Did the lifters today, but uh, the lifters came in. That's the strange part. I ordered the lifters and the camshaft from a company in California, either Fresno, something like that. Anyways, ordered the camshaft and lifters. They mailed the lifters to me, priority post or something, you, you know, so that's fine. But the camshaft, they shipped it with FedEx. So the lifters are here, they're installed. The camshaft is somewhere between here and uh, New Mexico. I've got to say something about this because uh, it's it's just one of those things you run into, and I run into them quite often. Uh, I like sci-fi movies. I like old, you know, I, Star Wars, best movie ever. Uh, Star Trek, awesome, you know. Uh, I like Godzilla. I like all the crazy old, you know, science fiction movies, even the B, B movies, sci-fi B from uh, the fifties. I like all those movies, but uh, recently there was a movie released, and let's get to the point. It was called uh, Mortal Engines, and it got panned, it got lousy reviews, and it bombed at the box office, basically. And at that point, I was suspect that eh, this may not sound like a good movie. What's it about? Well, you know, City is running around on wheels or something. That did not sound too... Uh, too spectacular. Watch the trailer. The trailer was like blah, you know, eh, this does not look like, you know, I, I don't see a storyline. All I see is cities running around on wheels. Uh, boy, that's believable. So it kind of got thrown to the wayside, but it has come out recently and been flipped over. Now it's available in uh, not just to buy it, but it, it almost immediately became rent. Like you could just rent the movie and see it. So I was really reluctant because I thought, you know, I hate to waste my money on a movie if it's that bad. And I read some more reviews. Wow, this thing's supposed to be really bad. Halfway through, you're lost in the movie. You don't even know if you're watching the same movie. It's, it's so bad or something. So I sat down the other night, rented it, <clears throat> and I had some other people, folks, with me. Uh, ages 18 to, say, 60. So we're watching the movie. About halfway through, everybody put their hand up and just said, Whoa, I'm really enjoying this movie. This is a fantastic movie. Do I, am I missing the point? Is there something wrong? I says, I don't know. It's supposed to be a really bad movie. I think that uh, sometimes the, the reviews I read, these people obviously didn't go and see the movie or they didn't pay any attention to the fact of whatever it was, you know, film that they thought they were watching. They weren't watching Mortal Engines. Uh, the movie was really good, excellent entertainment. I didn't have to think about much, I just let the movie go. Storyline, everything connected nicely. It was a smooth film right through to the end. I didn't see any bumps or any problems. Uh, audio, I mean, everything was good. Uh, it was very, it's a very good uh, movie. It's a shame. Maybe it'll become a cult classic down the road or something. But uh, if you're holding off and thinking about Mortal Engines, I shouldn't even be sponsoring that movie right now because it has nothing to do with me. But if you're thinking about it, uh, keep an open mind and maybe check it out. It actually was a good film. Uh, if you watch Netflix at all, there's one called The Rain right now. I'm really into that one. Can't wait for season two to, to uh, be released May the 27th for Netflix. That'll be a cool movie too. Had to throw that in there just because the... Uh, the fact that Mortal Engines bombed was, I guess, I don't know, something's wrong, and I don't even know what it was. Because even my college student kids and whoever else came by that night, uh, some friends and stuff, they all said, wow, this movie's great. Anyway, thanks for, thanks for, uh, thanks for my rant. <laughs> now, let's get back to the car. Yeah. All right, so the lifters came in, and the first thing we did, well, let's go over the bench for a second here. Okay, the first thing we did was, I've got this right here. It's a uh, an engine uh, assembly lube. I also, on the ends of the camshaft where the seals are, I use uh, an engine, you know, a heavy assembly grease. 
uh, for putting my stuff together. Just so, you know, in case you ever get into something like this, those are things you should have and you should use. Anyways, they're all greased up. And the new little guys are all sitting in their little place, all ready to go. Of course, we FedEx is driving around with a camshaft someplace uh, on the other end of the country. Probably, I'm looking at the tracking and I'm thinking probably three or four days out. Hey, this crazy cover, this is kind of strange. Let's take a quick look at this thing. This actually has some writing over here on this end. And if you straighten it around or turn it around like this so that the writing is facing you, the cover no longer no longer fits. In fact, it will not sit. Yeah, it will. It doesn't sit right here in the motor. Strange. And it won't go down properly. But if you turn it around so it's like backwards, drops right over, drops right on. Yeah, and sits where you know, well, the way it should. But now the writing is facing, I guess, towards the driver in the car. I, I don't know. I haven't figured that one out. The uh, rest of the car will be put together pretty soon. I hope the camshaft hurries up and gets here pretty soon. So I'm waiting for a camshaft. In the meantime, uh, still cleaning other parts up and you know getting everything ready to go for for the big day when I can turn the key and hear vroom vroom again. All right. Okay, if you have grandkids, you're going to know, probably you'll, you'll catch this before I caught it. One of the grandkids decided they're going to go to the dump. We have a dump, uh, it's a few miles from here, and it, they do recycle glass, aluminum. They have a bin just for uh, metal parts, uh, tires, you know, everything. And they, they have a place for just about everything. And so it's actually a really nice facility because you can just put whatever, you know, in, in the spot that you want it, and, and you sort of like you're helping to, you know, you're helping the environment a little bit. So he was, this kid was packing up some garbage bags of stuff and I was like, you know, I've got a, a, a bucket out here in the shop. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, there's the, there's the Lowe's trash bucket and they're just handy. I have a Home Depot one in the wood shop. I have a Lowe's one out here, so, you know, Lowe's does not want to feel special, so yes, we also have a trash can from Home Depot. And same thing, I just use them for a handy little trash can for around the shop. Sometimes they're actually too small, but let's not get, let's not go there. <laughs> but, so I gave him the bucket. It's full of old car parts, old rags, I mean, anything that can't be reused or cleaned or done something with ends up in my trash bucket. So I gave him the trash bucket and says, hey can dump this for me too while you're out. Okay, man, thanks. Yeah, I will. Uh, he gets back about a week into it. I'm working in the shop, went to throw some trash in my bucket. And it's like, where's the bucket? Where is my trash bucket? So I went and asked the young kid and like I said, if you have, if you're, uh, if you're grandparents and you have grandkids, you'll know what happened. Probably you'll have to figure it out. He threw my trash bucket into the trash bin at the dump. That means that bucket didn't come home. <laughs> Thanks for checking in on coffee and tools. Hope we get a can shaft in here pretty soon. <laughs>